I'll go live. We're live. What's up? Are we? Yep. Hello. Should be, as long as everything's working good. But yeah. What's up, guys? So I'm here with Marco, uh, a.k.a. the film trainer. Um, we're going to be tinting this Accord all in ceramic. Um, we're going to be doing 20 on all the sides and the rear, and then we're going to do 50 on the full windshield. And, uh, and we have things kind of prepped and mostly ready to go. So we'll get the camera set up here in just a sec, and then, uh, and then get started. So there's the chat. Got a nice burner account. Hello. Godly, what's Hello. up? Burner. DW. Swole gang. Oh, I hear the. <laughs> that's, that's what I have going. That I'm going to switch it over to mine. Okay, I hear it now. It's very monotone. It's literally that the entire stream. Um, the film trainer has entered the chat. There we go. That's awesome. Oh, everybody's saying hello. What's up, guys? Who is the weirdo behind you? It's Marco. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> T Town. Tint Wiz. Tint Wiz is here. What's up? Thanks for the coffee, Tint Wiz. <laughs> The customer is in on you. <laughs> no, he's not the customer, but he's gonna help out a bunch. All right, so I'm gonna get this camera set up and then we'll get going. But yeah, so Marco came out um, to show me some Matico Clearflex, and we've been shooting some video with that yesterday. Um, we have some BB guns to shoot the windshield with um, later today because we actually have to do a dedicated video tell them to spill all <laughs> what percentage we're doing 20 on all the sides 50 on the windshield <laughs> I know right? I put the safeties on who's that guy oh sun distributing you know that guy It gets, it, it really just gets a little uncomfortable. Yeah. It's not like overly heavy or anything, but it's definitely a lot. So let me turn this on. Hand mic. <laughs> Someone said, bring, bring your son to work day. <laughs> <laughs> I love this chat. <laughs> They're a good chat. What's the darkest you can go on a windshield? I do, um, I only go as dark as 35 on a windshield. Weird seeing you with a guest slap him for me. Haas. <laughs> Haas said to slap you. <laughs> Haas. Haas woke up and chose violence. Though. All right. Yeah, looks like everything's good. Um, so we've never tinted together either. So uh, no, it's kind of, I, I don't even know what to do. I'll I want to try your lead. heat gun, though. Definitely, yeah. So I'll probably shrink both the back and the windshield. Um, so we'll start getting that set up. and. I want to watch how you do this, though. Oh, OK. Yeah. So for, for the glass aid, I'll start up here in the middle. This adds some like application time. So one of the nice things is that it's white. So it makes the cutting portion then a little bit quicker. Got it. But it's still not too long. And that's why it was crucial that it was completely dried, obviously, because you want it to stick and yep. adhere really quick. Got yep. It. So even if the glass is kind of greasy, like if you just took a towel and loosely wiped it off, like it's, it's a little stretchy. Um, it'll go around corners really nice. But when this gets a little wet or it's a little greasy, it'll start to pull inwards, and then it, it. I would screw up your cut. And I notice you're not pulling a lot of tension on 
with that hand? No, I, I, if anything, I try and like pre-stretch it out and then let it relax. Um, keeping the roll at a sideways angle also helps ah. with just putting it on. Got it. So it just keeps it closer, and then you can kind of just Smart. See, it's the little whole, things like that. Strape your whole window, and then you just do it right to the end. So it's a quarter inch wide, um, so your line doesn't have to be perfect. If you're a little in, if you're a little out, just as long as you are conscious of where that is. But when you cut in the center of that, that creates your little one eighth inch border got it, got it. all the way around. Nice. So, and it gives you a little wiggle room as long as you're on the outside of that line. I'd be interested to try that on clear plex, for sure. I want to, tr we should try that. But with the carbon blade, because it's thick. Uh-huh. And you need. We could try it with that. Um, another thing I'm interested about is if you could put it on the outside of it, so if you had to tint a window still and it had clear plex on the windshield. Tinting the windshield? So like the Explorer now has clear plex on it. Yes. So if I don't remove that and I want to retint my windshield, cutting out that. Oh, right, right, right. right, right. There's a couple of ways that you could do it, yeah. but my. I always wondered if, if that would work on something like that too. Um, they said, do you let Marco remove the seals for bottom loading? Heck yeah. No, no, oh, I told him minute. definitely don't remove any seals, <laughs> and uh, he definitely didn't do that. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he popped out um, um, the seals on these ones. And now he's forever cursed. I know. He did it at my shop, so. The first two didn't want to come out. <laughs> <laughs> what are they saying? Super chat. This is like the tinting Avengers meeting up. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so angle it like that. Oh, there's another one. Okay, so I don't know if... There, there it is. Wow. Cool. <laughs> you guys are giving them the full treatment. Here, let me clean this off. I don't know if you want to do this. I will clean my headphone off. I don't know if you want to wear one. Yeah, I'll wear, like, I'll wear whatever you wear, coach. But as soon as, oh, that turns noise canceling on too. That's kind of funny. All right, so we got a couple. Swole Gang with the two, thank you. It's like the Tinning Avengers. Um, and then Daniel Reyna. Daniel Reyna with the 10. The Tinning Avengers. Salutations, like Master Matt. Kumusta, Kuya. What's up, man? Thank you. All right, my lines might be kind of wavy. Okay. I'm new to this. Uh, oh, that's fine. Do my best, though. Let's see. You're here. fired. <laughs> I'll even spray this with alcohol. Yes. Yeah, I definitely want to try this with clear plugs. Oh, show. Sure. All right, we're going to give him a headphone. I guess that's the one advantage to like truly wireless. Is this upside down? Let me see. Oh, no, that's right. All right, so here's a newly cleaned with alcohol. <laughs> okay. That's it. Um, this you. is for your left, left. ear. Okay. Yep. And then Ooh. if it all of a sudden sounds like it goes quiet, um, like noise canceling, do me a favor and just double tap. Just tap the side of the headphone twice. One, two. There you go. Now it's okay. okay there we go. Yeah, because it does noise canceling in like one ear, yeah, and yeah. then your other one is not. This is gonna be funny because he's gonna try and listen to this and talk at the same it's time hard. as I'm talking like, to him too. Whoa. It's gonna be very weird for I'm him. Plugged in the matrix, bro. <laughs> Definitely plugged in. What would be cool is to do a, I, so I'd have to buy a completely separate <clears throat> setup, so that would get expensive, but it would be cool to have, like, you could do another GoPro, and literally, like, if you wore the same setup, you could, I could have it flip back and forth between That's awesome. cameras on the fly. Dope. All right. Who is Swole Gang? I don't know. 
He's a cool dude. <laughs> oh my god. This is better than the Top Gun Maverick premiere. That's hilarious. We can hear him well already. Yeah, cool. So I bought a separate mic setup. So now you got a good mic for both of us. So I don't have to like I'm gonna I have to yell bladder. over, but you can hear him. Oh, I did that thing again. Hang on, I won't do that on the windshield. I'm dry shrink prepping this. Um, just spray the baggie, don't do what I did. Muscle memory kicks in. But still a light coat, so we're good. Oh yeah, and he's got a tint buster in there. Dude, we got, we got all the stuff. You found your DSP. Oh, Sun Distributing, thank you for uh, sending me um, God, I did that thing again. Um, thank you for sending me one. I appreciate it. Nice. No, <laughs> don't cancel your customers. No. Canceled. Canceled all my customers to watch you guys. That's funny. I'm loving this tint slip. Swole Gang. Swole Gang with the two. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. You didn't have to do that, but... When's the fall coming? If it's over $5. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Because we have people like Daniel Reyna that would sit there with a dollar and drive me batshit crazy. But I, I'm, I'm just kidding. I love you, buddy. <laughs> Beach towels shouldn't work like... Tint towels. Um, so, beach. There he is. Oh. <laughs> there we go. That's so cool. Daniel Reyna. See, I knew it. <laughs> Batman and Robin Timmons. Thanks, man. All right, so we're going to get started cutting some stuff. Thank you so much for the five. Um, so, this is that roll that we're going to be using. Um, on all the sides and the rear. Um, oh yeah, we didn't tape the doors either. You don't really need to tape something like this, being that it's new. But, so to show you this stuff too. Are you gonna be bottom loading these ones? No, I'm gonna two stage. You're gonna two stage? Okay. No, no, I'm gonna bottom. Oh, well I don't know. No, no. Some people remove the bottom seals and then still two-stage. That would be like something I do. I'd remove a seal and then still tin it the same way and drive everybody crazy. Uh, someone asked if I'm using tint slime. No, what did they ask? No, I'm we're using, using tint um, slip for I'm this using one. using tint slip, yeah, for sure. We got three ounces in the three gallon keg right now. Um, should be plenty slippery, but Pro Nano is also the most aggressive adhesive. So cross your fingers that it's enough. Yeah, in the tent buster, I'm using eight mLs for three liters. So I like it. It smells really good. The smell, is like, it's, it's impressive. <laughs> like it sticks with you. I like it. It's it's hard to describe. Yeah. But it's really good. Whatever it is, it's not like an like added it. scent either. It's just kind of like a natural scent. Of Wait. So why are you taping these? So I don't need to tape it. This is more just like by habit oh, okay. for something like this. Um, and then this is the this is the seal guard tape. So hmm. yeah, with a with like a rubber seal, especially being a new car, like it's going to be redundant to tape the side seals. Okay. Um, but essentially, like felt seals or dirty oh. seals. <laughs> This is what I use on the sides to help okay. keep everything cleaner. So when you are installing, um, it's just an extra barrier to help. Like so, when you know things leak into your tent when you're two staging or something right. like that, helps prevent all that. And would you still clean it with a towel? Um, generally, you don't have to. To get it to stick a little better, you can. But I just literally like that's the nice thing about it. I can leave the seals as is. I roll the windows down. I throw some tape over it, and I'm moving on. Okay, I'm open to. Trying different things for sure. 
As long as it doesn't oh smell God, like the stuff from allergic. Flex. <laughs> that smells like that a smells nursing like. home. <laughs> That's funny. No. No, I don't think so. Sun Distributing. 50. God damn. Thank you. I keep forgetting, but I need more Glass Aid products on my shelf. Wow. Well, that's a way to let me know. You sent $50? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's that was... Awesome, uh Rick. You got you to gotta stop over there, too. Texas Tim Pro. Yep, 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 yep. What's up, Tim Pro? How you doing? He is the uh, heat shrink battle winner. Who is? Uh, Texas, Texas Tim Pro? Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. That's Jamal. I'm sorry. No. Yes. Tin slip smells awesome, tastes horrible. <laughs> yeah, don't eat well, it. Well, that's, that's fair. You probably shouldn't eat it all. Um, cool. Oh, yeah, and then you'll get towels over on this side after you're done with that side. Someone will match the super chat for sure. I'm just trying to see if somebody will match it. <laughs> money. <laughs> That's so funny. That's funny. Money laundering, right? Because the super chat and then he orders tool. <laughs> That's funny, dude. Let me try that tape. Yep. Go ahead. So. I'm so used to doing everything myself. No, you're good. Oh, I like how it's easy to rip apart. It's nice. Okay. So with, uh, if you can get it in just fine with one big piece, that's good. Um, if you find you have problems with the way that the, you know, on a tighter door seal or something, um, I'll rip it into smaller pieces and just do a couple of them. Got it. They're saying make him two stage. All right, I'll two stage. I know how to two stage. <laughs> Full They're full all length. set up for uh, for bottom loading, but it Pick would be funny. Stage. No, you honestly should probably bottom load them then, um, just because they don't usually see anybody do that here. I'm always two staging everything, so I get asked a lot about bottom loading. All right. All right. <laughs> so let's put the fine. windows back up. Okay. You get your. Want to turn the car on? Go ahead and roll this up. Let me see here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Of course, he I know, know how to do it. <laughs> well, that's why it came here. It's, it's actually just tint lessons this time. Yeah, that's funny. All right, so what I'll typically do is I'll double cut one side of the car. Um, so being that we're not really sure what we're doing. Oh yeah, this probably has to run through too. Oh, you know what? That. The, uh, my spur is back there if you want to use it. No, let me make sure this is plugged in. Because this, I need too many things plugged in. There. There you go. Nice. Let's run through what was in there yesterday. That's better. All right. So this is Pro Nano 20. We're gonna be, again, doing this on all the sides and the rear, and then we got at 50 that we're gonna do on the windshield. You double cut? Mm-hmm. Yeah, typically I'll double cut everything. Just 
Should I have you cut on that side? Yeah, I can cut the other side. All right. That's fine. Here, sure. this is our way of double cutting. So then I can have Marco go over there and cut that side, and then I can do this side. <laughs> It'll go at the same pace. See if I remember how to do this, Matt. See if you <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. Okay. Ooh, I can't wait to use my ninja blade. <laughs> he dubbed the edge. green knives. He dubbed these that. top edge ones the ninja blades. That's right. Double cutting is just two people. It's a race. Oh no. Nah. Galveston, Texas, hello. Oh, you can do these patterns longer then too, because you're Yes. You're bottom loading. Okay. Ninja noises. Wow. <laughs> All right. Um, let me get my ninja blade. How are you doing with the uh, the chat? Talking in your ear the it's, whole time. It's um, something to get used to for sure. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, get used to it. <laughs> 1999, nice. Okay. <laughs> what does that potato thing mean? <laughs> I'm lost. It's, uh, was that DW with some emojis? Yep, <laughs> there it is. So the funny thing about emojis is that it speaks what they are. So when people do like smiley face emoji, it, do it doesn't skip over the emoji. So it says what they said. And then it says smiley face. Yeah. Or fire or potato. Yeah, the Ninja Blade cut that top edge really, really good. Good. I'm a fan, for sure. <laughs> it hurt like F. Congratulations. <laughs> Damn. Tint paper cuts are annoying. Bunching up, what's the question? What um, film to... bunching up in the top corner when you're trying to shrink a windshield. You could be working from the center out where you should be working, shrinking from the outside in because the most curved parts on the back window and front windshields are the corners. So you always want to shrink to the flatter surface. What? <laughs> All right. Yeah, so. I've got a lot of videos to help with uh, um, like top corner situations on back windows. It's a hard thing to explain, but your film can bunch up at the top and you need to fan out the film. So it just shrinks evenly. <laughs> beard on the stream. These guys are funny. Oh my god. From reaching into the plotter basket? Damn. Ouch. What's generally harder to shrink? Back or front windshields? Um, usually front windshields, they taper more at the top corners. So like on this one, um, it's not too bad, but it's got that curve and you see how the lower corners kind of like scooch out this way and then the upper ones kind of tweak in this way. So what happens is when you flatten out your sides, 
you're kind of compressing more film towards the top corners. So it's good. You'll see we'll, when we shrink it, we'll pull it and flatten it out when we're shrinking it. All right. Oh, when you shrink even though you're bottom loading. Huh? You shrink it even though you're going to bottom load. Yeah. If you don't need to, though. No, I never. When you, you bottom load, for to. the most part, I don't. Watch me get the world's largest finger right now. And you said you've done hundreds of these ones, so. Yes, sir. It'd be extra embarrassing if you got one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 19 years experience. Yeah, he's been tending longer than I have. How many years do you have? Uh, so I, I think 15. Nice. Um, it was really like 2000. I was, so I was going to school. I was going to aviation mechanic school in like 2008, 2009. Um, and then I was that's where I was doing automotive accessories um, and then also started learning window tint because the window tinter at our shop decided to quit over the weekend and we had like two stores. Awesome. And, uh, and it was just kind of like, good luck. <laughs> but my dad had uh, his business partner's son um, come out and teach me a lot over the course of a month. And then I was just kind of learning on my own Slash with people ever since. Marco was handed a squeegee at birth. It's <laughs> funny. So Marco was handed a squeegee at birth, and he's been tinning for 19 years. That's Damn, funny. you're young still. Heck yeah. <laughs> the coffee keeps me young. The coffee. <laughs> That's the secret. Just bring in lots of coffee. See, I sip on coffee all day, every day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Currently 33. That's so funny <laughs> you said that. Hold on, I got it. <laughs> Those are my favorite. Shane Doyer. That's so funny. That is so funny. I'm 35 with 107 years of experience. That's that's, so that's funny. impressive. Oh, that's so funny, dude. What keeps you away from using a plotter more often? Um, well, one is I put way too much shit on my tables. So I need to set up like an actual cut board. The other thing is... Um, I'm a little more particular about top edges and stuff like that. So plotters are decent, but you really have to get used to setting them up to cut out a top edge if you want to be a lot more consistent with them. Just kind of depends on the software that you're using, though. Some are really good. Um, but even in the same software, you can have some patterns that are really good, some that just aren't as consistent. Um, so being what I charge um to do the cars i just and i set aside more than enough time to do that and hand cut everything out so yeah i love these ninja blades dude these are these are game changers cool. for the top edge i'm definitely a fan the ninja blade we got to change the product listing now to ninja blade but yeah, I like doing, um, hand cutting is consistent, so you always know what you're going to get for a pattern. With a plotted pattern, it's always a little unknown until you've actually cut out that car. But what you can have is a pattern that just doesn't quite line up, but you've already gone through the shrinking, um, the cutting, the cleaning and then you go to install it and that's when you find out that oh the pattern doesn't quite fit and that's a that's a big bummer nice I'm 27 to nine years oh that's like a real one <laughs> I thought we were still going in that direction of uh, 
I've been tinning for longer than I've been alive. That's so funny. <laughs> like dog ears. Dog ears. There you go. Are tent ears longer than actual people ears? I like that idea. All right. Do you file? Uh, no. Oh, I could do that too. Did you bring one? Of course. Oh. You, have you seen that toolbox of mine? <laughs> you literally oh, yeah. Like I haven't seen the file, though. Yeah. We'll do some filing. All right. So I'm really mad at myself. I bought um, a file that T-Town recommended, and then I put it on my passenger seat. Oh. And I, now I don't know where, I, where it is. So I have to rebuy it. <laughs> is it a Snap-on one? Uh, no, it was a, it was a cheaper one on Amazon. Oh. So the reason why I like the Snap-on one, because it's ultra fine, and you can literally hit the glass at any angle, or file the top edge at any angle, and you won't have to um, worry about, like, chipping the glass. Nice. Versus other, other files, they are very aggressive. So... Yeah, this one was still fine, but I want to check out a good one in person. Yeah. Because it's, it's kind of like the same thing um, that I told you about when I was learning reverse rolling. I haven't really come across um, anybody that's done filing around here very, very much at all. So it's just one of those things that's always kind of been like, skipped over, but I've seen lots of videos. At this yeah, point. I mean, filing, to be honest, it's more of a tenor's thing. Like, the customer's rarely going to say, hey, I want, I want my you. top edge filed. Yeah. It's more of like an ego, not an egotistical thing, but more of like a, a signature. Yeah. You know? Yep. So. I don't think the, the average person is not going to notice. They're not going to know what you're even talking about exactly. until you show them the difference one to the next. Yeah. For sure. All right. Filing is a little Should too much good. sugar for a dime. All right. <laughs> what is it? Filing is a little bit too much sugar for a dime. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh man, these guys are gonna Oh, damn. I literally came over to the computer, and then I got fogged. Wow. <laughs> that stuff's strong. DC Customs with the five. Thank you. Who's that working with you? New employee. Yep. He works here now? Yep. It's Marco. I'm let's, going home now. Let's break the internet with that news. No, this is so, for those of you that are just joining, uh, this is Marco, the film trainer. Um, he is out here with this stuff, Clearplex from Matico. So we were doing windshield protection film. So we're shooting some videos. Um, yes. I, I have to do some tests. Um, but we're going to be shooting a windshield with oh, Clearplex. Wow. wow. Someone sent $100. What? Who did so. that? Kobe? Darnhart? Heck yeah. Wow. You need to come tint here more often, I think. Ah, we're going to get steaks tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kobe. Kobe. Kobe with 100. Damn, Kobe. dude. Got my first back window shrink done perfectly a couple weeks ago due to religiously watching your videos on it. Oh, that is so cool, man. That's what it's all about, my friend. That right there. That is super cool to hear. Good job, man. Thank you so much. That is a, that's a huge super chat, buddy. Once you do your first one, the next ones come easier, too. Would you consider doing a, a separate class on how to live stream our trade? So I've got some videos with like that kind of talk about the hardware. Um, I always suggest 
looking up the people that I watched when I was learning how to do all of this. So Harris Heller, um, he's a good channel. Gaming Careers. Um, there's quite a few other ones. Epochs. They all have videos on streaming software. Um, the, the difficult part is the headset. So you can just get a GoPro and stream to YouTube. I, I don't know if you need over 1,000 subs to do that off of the GoPro. I've heard that before. But if you, if you send the GoPro feed to a computer. Oh, oh wow. God, you guys. Dang. Oh. <laughs> Who sent that? Tent was. Tent Wiz with the 50, give that windshield hell. <laughs> Thank you, Tent Wiz. Thanks, man. Tent Wiz himself, the GOAT. I call him the Joe Rogan of the industry. Oh, yeah? Yeah, this podcast. He's just a I, I like the podcast being. a lot. Yeah. The podcast has been super cool. Um, DW, sorry, DW... If you want to send me a direct message about um, Clearplex, um, I'll help you out there. What do you think <clears throat> on Matico so far? That's a good question. The Clearplex has been really cool. It's been much easier to install, um, kind of than I thought. Like, I thought shrinking, so it depends on what you're shrinking. But as far as shrinking goes, it's not that far off. Um, you do have to wet shrink it, but I, it, I'm at least familiar enough with that whole process, so that part wasn't the hard part. Hard part is really just trimming out your pattern perfectly. Yeah. Um, but it's been fun to work with. For sure. They also sent out some um, ceramic window tint. I tinted a door on my blazer, <laughs> um, and that stuff is very different. Um, wind coast. What's that? Wind coast, yeah. Yeah, so that, that is not Matico, that's wind coast, but they're owned by them. But um, the, they sent out the ceramic film, which like at face value, when you pick it up and you look at it, it's like, it's one, it's really, the, the whole roll of it is very thick. Um, and it's just, it's super different from what you would think. A mm -hmm. um, little more rubbery feeling, but it's on the car now, and it doesn't look um, like hazy or anything. So it's, a, it's definitely been a cool product. Yeah, and they made the thicker version because the first generation of Wincoast installers, the feedback was that it was too thin, so. Um, someone said the Nano Ceramics. Thoughts on Scorpion? Um, my, uh, my dad's shop, they used Scorpion for a while. They like them. I haven't used them very much, though. They're, they're a little bit, like, they're a more known brand, but they're a little bit on the cheaper side of things. I think they're decent stuff for what they are. Um, the nano ceramic one seems like it's easier to shrink. That's the one we've been using too. So he did mention that. He said the clear one is a little harder to shrink. The nano ceramic one shrinks a little bit easier on that windshield protection film over there. Yeah, we should probably do both, the clear one. Yeah. Just so that you can see the difference. Yeah, I can leave that one. Um, I got the blazer parked out front, so we could do, we could do the windshield on that. Why don't you guys use a plotter? We are using a plotter. You know, you had this window set up, and, uh, and then I was like, hey, glass aid. And he's like, oh. Oh, okay. We're, uh, we're bottom loading. Oh, right I'm now. sorry. Yeah. So, bottom loading, when you are bottom loading, if you're on the left side of the vehicle, you want to drop the opposite side. So, if I'm on the left side, I want to drop the right side. And I just want to keep going all the way down and to the right. And literally, don't focus on the left side. As long as you keep going down and to the right, this will literally snake itself in and didn't touch anything. That's it. Nice. And this is, this is pro nano, so this is like a tacky film. Dang. That, that blade makes my top edge like, dang. Nice. Cool. Okay, I'm, I want to start hand cutting now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Forget plotter. I thought they were good. Use the ninja blade for that top edge. Damn. I like it. I'm a fan. That's cool to hear. I'm definitely a fan. Because when you're trying all these different things, you're like, maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like this is really good. Yeah. But then to just, like, hand it to somebody and let them use it. Uh, so we removed the bottom seal. We didn't have to remove the panel. So the towel is covering it right now. So what you do yeah. is you kind of pop, like there's a couple of clips, and it just pops back, and then the seal pulls out of this one. Um, that's the case for quite a few vehicles. Um, it's just not going to be near every vehicle that, that removes that way. Some you have to remove some screws. Um, it really is a little bit of... You know, you, you have to kind of learn vehicle types um, or, or brands. Like, there's a lot of similarities between, like, the way Hondas are going to be put together versus um, the way that, like, Chevys are going to be put together. But being that a lot of them just, like, you can pop back the top, pull out the seals, that makes it a lot easier. All right. <laughs> That's funny. So... They are the plotters. I definitely... I think 8 mLs is a little bit too much... To use the plotter so off stream. I use the plotter on stream too. Um, I just don't use it all that often. It kind of just depends on the way that the stream is going. I will use it whenever that hand cutting gets a lot more tedious. So like, for example, if I'm cutting out um, a three piece glass on a, um, on a truck, I'll be a little bit more careful about that. Like it's quicker to go to the plotter, cut that out. Have you seen this? Uh, no. Just to protect the seal. I don't want to anchor with the heat right here because it's sliding around a lot on me. So it'll keep it from burning yeah. the sides. I've used like a tools and stuff like I have not seen that one though. I'm not trying to burn anything. Yep. So it just depends. <laughs> Masking everything off. Yeah, that soap's slippery. It's so good. I would probably use in three liters, probably six to seven okay. mLs. Uh, I have the torch. It's in my toolbox. Yeah, we've been getting good feedback on the slip. I still, like, it's really trying to adjust it. Um, because on, on a Honda, I think Hondas generally slide easy. On... Um, on some older glass, like I just did a, what was it? I did like a, an older Mountaineer the other day. Yeah. And I had to scrub the windows down with, uh, with Sun Distributing Squeaky Monkey um, to get it to not stick on the doors. The windshield was fine. The doors, um, they were a little tacky, but that's really just because of the way it beat it off. On like hydrophobic coatings? Yeah, like, it really has to do with that, but I think there's something with older glass, too. That's, mm. It's not necessarily hydrophobic, Yeah, but it's just, like, there's just, like, a tackiness with older glass. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. This is a, I, I this like is a nice tape. stream, by the way, so I'm just going to let you install everything, and I'm just going to be camera guy for... Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, Squeaky Monkey is a glass scrubbing compound. Um, that's this stuff right here. So if you spray the glass and you see um, the water just beating off the window, that is what this stuff is to take care of. So you put this on like a triage scrub pad, you work this into the glass, and it almost like wet sands the glass a little bit. You wipe it off, and then everything's going to lay a lot easier. So. Another way that people do it is they take a torch. The only thing that terrifies me about taking a torch to the inside of the car is obviously like all the paneling. You want to be, you can't get too close to the edges or you got to block them off. Um, yeah. And if a customer is watching, that's the other thing. It, it's like if I were to make a video with that on the inside, it, it's just nothing like, oh my right. God, what the hell are you doing to the inside of that car? Yeah, exactly. So it works. It's just. It's just people aren't ready for it. <laughs> Torch is definitely high risk, and because there's no, there's no going back. Once you fry something, it's, it's fried. Right. All right, L2 stage. Looks good. Just got a little water pockets here before they dry in. Yeah. Thank you, chef. Dang, dude. There's some clean work.
did everybody learn in a shop for the most part? Uh, yes, I did. I did. Um, I wouldn't have been tinting any other way, though, had I not been in a shop, just because that's when I was introduced to it. It wasn't anything that I seeked out. But there's plenty of people that still, like, it's harder going, but you can definitely learn outside of a shop on your own. Um, what's nice is at a shop, though, it's a, it's a much more collaborative effort to figure out problems. So you get somebody that usually knows more than you um, or people that are there to kind of help you out. So this is a heat gun that I want to try. I really want to try this on the windshield. Yeah, do it. I think I'm going to have to move an extension. Oh, wait. No, this is good. All right. So this is that Steinel one. Let's just crank it up. <laughs> These guys are so funny. <laughs> So this one takes a little bit to warm up. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it definitely does. For sure. That's probably for the safety of the heat gun. And then remember, I know you know this, but everyone watching, mm -hmm. the temperature is the internal temperature, not the temperature on the end of this gun. Okay. So. Yeah, no, mo no wonder why you said just start it and let it warm up for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Okay. That's super okay, cool. Bird. I was able to open up a shop from watching the channel. That's, That's beautiful. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. That's why I still do this channel the way I do it. That's why you're the goat, my friend. Bah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's getting toasty. We're at 1,000. I said it's a 1,200. Oh, nice. I want to see what it can do. I want to see what it does, too. Ooh. Yeah, usually you can... Yeah, we're at 1,300. Yeah, that thing's fine. Oh, no, not 1,300. 1030. Um, yeah, I said it's a 12. All right. Things piping hot. We might get impatient with it, but it's at a thousand, over a thousand. So we'll see. Ooh, that is noticeably faster. I've used like the Porter cables, the Wagners, everything else in between. This is the gun that I have not seen in person yet. That's fast. You can see why I like it for clear flex. It just like it a just dragon. It just smoke through that. This yeah. is probably the like any heat gun up to like a hundred dollars is more about adding features. I think to the gun. This is this adds speed. So so with the with the glass head, this is mm -hmm. okay as long as it's flat. Yep. right? obviously. Yep. So what I'll do too is I'll cut the whole thing out. Um, I'll pull the glass aid and then I'll touch up the edges at Got the it. end, but they're generally lay flat anyways. You can get the heat gun really close. Nice. It's just like tinning over a sticker, really. Um, the gun, I think that one is 250. It's definitely weighs more than the Wagner's. It's a little heavier too than the Porter cables. Yes. But that's like, it's a, just a better build quality. It's just a better gun. Yeah, I'm like, I'm 100% I'm gonna get this. My, my question was like, is it gonna be noticeably faster or, or is it gonna be like, eh, it's a little bit. No, this is genuinely like way faster. Yeah. The Wagner, in comparison, you'd see me getting much closer, taking a little bit more time with it. But this is just like, right. yeah, this is just like a buzzsaw through it. Um, can you grab me yeah. that extension cord over here, that red one? Then I'll just swap it out without much downtime. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and plug 
that in. <laughs> shrink Lexan with it. Lexan? Is Lexan difficult to shrink or something? Yeah, so the their cheaper carbon films especially, those are the ones that um, just don't shrink very well. Right. So what happens is a lot of new people, they see Lexan and they pick it up because like, hey, I don't want to get a terrible film, but I, w I need some cheaper film to practice. Right. But a cheaper carbon film and a cheaper ceramic film, they just don't shrink as fast or like they don't shrink as consistently. Got it. So it's easily like the number one film that throws people off in the beginning. All right, cool. We're pretty much at the same temperature that we were before. Pull out, pull out Lexan. <laughs> These guys are funny. Yeah, I'm gonna pick this one up right after. It's the Probably a Steinel couple. Now HG 2320E. I'll give you a link because Amazon is like $150 more. Wow. So I'll send you a link where it's. I think it's 2:30. Yeah, I don't know why Amazon is trying to get rich off heat guns. Yeah, you if you want to find that link too, yeah. I can post it in chat, and then anybody that wants to like pick this up. Yeah, I'll here, I'll find it right now. If somebody has an advertisement, okay. So yeah, if you have stickers. Um, or tax on a back window, you can shrink right over it. The only thing that it's going to do is throw you off a little bit with air. Um, kind of like there'll be some air pockets over the lettering that might throw you off, but it's it's fine. It's nothing that's going to going to ruin it. Yeah, if you um, if you find that, just shoot it to me, and then I'll add it to. Uh, yeah, I'll post it as a link. I'm getting it right now. And you did that fast. You got to compete next year at a heat shrink, <laughs> heat shrink battle. I'm going to do this windshield too. I'm just going to throw 50 on the, I'm going to leave this running. I'm going to throw 50 on the windshield and just go right to shrinking that. I know my heat guns. I still like screw up a lot with the torch though. I don't look at it, I don't use a torch like at all, but anytime I pick it up, I'm like, man, I just, I never took the time to really understand them that, I that could, well. I could show you. Okay, so the link I have it, do you want me to put um, it in the... Just shoot it to me on Messenger, okay. and then I'll go to my phone and I'll add it Got to it. chat. Because I don't think it'll let you post a link directly in chat that way. It's 272, Amazon has it for 350. 272, Amazon have it for three. Wow, that's a big difference. Yeah. And I've seen they have like an even beefier heat gun. I have that one. It's $400. <laughs> I don't like it. It's extremely heavy. Oh, okay. And that It looked like a tank. Yeah. That pops breakers. Oh, damn. For sure. That's probably why they only make them so hot. Yeah. So now that I retired that one since I got this one. Okay. Let's just straighten this one out. Um... Pick your side up just a little bit, just to even out the top corners. All right. Half okay, torch, I guess. half heat gun. I'll get the, do you have a propane? Um, I've got, yeah, that one right there, it's got okay. uh, propane. It's got the good end on it, though. It's just not map gas. All right. Get my heat gun. All right. I mean, my torch. How about this? You want to do torch on one side, and then yeah, I'll sure. do heat gun on the other side. <laughs> and just to let everybody know, this is perfectly safe. Um, what's nice about a torch is that it allows you to go faster, and you don't hit as much heat on the windshield. So this might look scary, um, but if you know what you're doing, this is a real common practice at this point. Heat guns will essentially, you can get a glass just as hot 
Ooh, this has some uh, this has some pinchy corners here. A little bit. That'll be interesting. Okay. Hopefully I remember how to use the torch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real confidence inspiring statement. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> Um, fine, or uh, no, that tape doesn't work the same, so tint's more rigid, it's not as soft as vinyl, so that, that pull-through line doesn't work on window tint. Yeah, this one, like, it's got a little bit of curve oh, Yeah, here. there's definitely curve on this windshield. Whew, all right. Should you be good with the torch? Yeah, yeah, I'm good with the torch. All right. I've just never used this film before. <laughs> okay, so this stuff actually shrinks legitimately quick. Okay. Yep. It's not, yeah, it's just a fast, real consistent shrinking film. So I would say just treat this like a high quality dyed film as far as shrinking goes. Like it'll move quick. <laughs> These guys are hilarious. I'm just waiting for him to get set up and then we'll go. In the meantime, I'm letting this heat up as much as it can. It says 1200, but it's not going over 1050. But that is like, that is stupidly hot in comparison to the Wagner ones. That's what I like. It like genuinely makes a difference. I've like gone halfway with, um, yeah, a lot of times I've gone halfway with, uh, with heat guns. So I've, I've gone up to like the 80 slash hundred dollar heat guns and they seem to give you more features, but they don't make shrinking any faster really. So you ready? Let's go. Let's see. All right, we'll jump back and forth a little because I want to show kind of this and okay. then I'll do some. So like, shrinks good. I'm just going slow. I want to see how the film reacts. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, good. that's fine. Now the tricky part. Yeah, so the way this corner cuts in here like that, that makes this trickier for sure. Because that top corner is gonna wanna suck up a lot of heat. Nice, okay. Easy. Yeah, they sent me this stuff for a video, and the video that I was going to make um, well, I can't was, like, the difference between shrinking ceramic and a regular film. Because at the time, they were really slow. And then I shrunk it, and I'm like, this stuff is just as fast as a regular film. Like, what the hell? Nice. Cool. And then we're going to try the baby, uh, baby method over here with a heat gun. He does make it look easy. Been using a torch for 19 years. The torch is going to be cheaper, but your learning curve is going to be higher. Right. So you're going to screw up way more film faster with the torch, and you're not necessarily going to understand why. So right. as long as you can successfully get some windows shrunk, then you learn a lot just from going through that whole process, and then you can also start picking up your speed and trying those different things. And the propane tank matters too. So like this is regular propane. Mm -hmm. uh, the yellow map gas, that's gonna burn a lot hotter and it shoots more air. Oh, and it shoots so, more air. Yeah, so oh. if I, as close as I was getting it with this, yeah. I most definitely would have burned it with the yellow one, oh. with the map gas. 
I didn't realize, see, I, I heard the map gas gets hotter. I didn't know it actually blows more air, too. Yes. Yep. Oh, that might have been the biggest You know mistake. LU from Tent Busters? Oh, yeah. He yeah, makes it look like it. He's like the, the goat with the map gas, for sure. There you go. Nice. So then after you cut, you'll shrink this part again, just to make sure that it's completely fat? Yeah, just the top and bottom edges. So nice. I would do that like with or without glass aid. Whenever I shrink in a whole window, I always just, after I cut, I tuck up, or touch up the, the edges. Okay, so with these top corners, see this little like curve here? So a lot of times when you first start shrinking, you shrink this area, you press it up. Some of it is going to want to naturally kind of like push out up at an angle, and then you readjust this corner a little bit. Um, but if you get a lot of film bunching up in the top corner, you want to pull on it and kind of like fan it out. So there's peaks and valleys. The parts that are low to the glass, um, those aren't going to get as hot. The peaks are going to get the hottest, so that's where a lot of film starts to compress. But if you pull on it and fan it out, and when you get the heat gun close, you're still shrinking it. It gets harder to see how much you're shrinking, but go through, try and shrink some like you would any other section. And then if you let it go, then you can kind of let it settle. And then you can see exactly how much that you shrunk it. Don't wait to watch the film react too much. Cause you're kind of holding it suspended there, all flattened out. I missed that one. He said Vegas has the over under in one minute. <laughs> oh man, these guys are hilarious. I'd be yeah, laughing. they're great. I'd be laughing all the, the entire time. We get some good so memes funny, in here. Dude. I really like showing other perspectives too. So you guys get used to the way that I do things, but there's so many different ways to do the same thing. Um, nice, like everybody at the competitions will always tin a window in a different way. Yeah. Like very few look 100% identical one to the next. Exactly. So, but they're all, you're all doing the same thing. So as long as you get the job done, that's the important part. Cool. All right. Definitely so we artists. Can get these to this. cut out. Install the doors. That was good to try that gun. That's a you good sold? gun. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up a couple. Yeah. Me too. I'm gonna put one on each side of here. Nice. Uh, yeah, you, you'll. Flex, you'll <laughs> Clearplex is not bulletproof, so don't shoot at it with the. <laughs> don't shoot at it with like a gun or something dumb like that. Why? Why, why, oh, we, why did we get those? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna be great though. Do you use the Ninja Blade? No. Okay. I'll just use a stainless steel still. The only time I use the Ninja Blade uh, is specifically for top edges. Got it. So cutting on this stuff is going to feel a little bit different too than cutting directly on glass. If you so want you'll find like you'll feel the blade dig in a little bit. Um, so you almost like you almost like dig it in a little bit and then drag it across. So you're not cutting all the way through. Yes, ninja blade is the thin carbon blade. Yeah. See, I cut different than you. If you want, I can cut this side. For cutting on this, sometimes you'll find you have to use a sharper angle. But yeah, I'll, Got it. I'll take a look at what you're doing. So normally cutting on glass, you're going to be a little bit lower to the glass, right. like real, I could use that real one. low, sharp. Stamp it off for you. Okay. So when I'm cutting, I I'm about two to two to three lines out. I find that the more extended the blade is, the less control you have. So. Mm. Um, and I'll actually let me get a new blade. I like keeping more out just so I can get lower to the yeah. glass. But. Um, do you have a I'm new blade listening. on you? What's that? Do you have a new blade on you? No, I keep them all. Oh, sorry. Scattered around here. Uh, here's more stainless. Yeah. Yeah, NT. NTs are the best. Japan's finest. And the Ninja Blades are NT as well. Mm hmm. Yep, they're both NTs. All right. So, let me take this thing off. 
hamburger helper glove. Take that off. <laughs> All right. So two to three lines out, and I'll pinch like right in the middle. Okay. With my thumb and my index, and I'm using about as much pressure as it takes to open up a door. So. That. And then you want to go what halfway? Yeah, yeah, okay. halfway. If it's a little wobbly, it's fine. I'm just putting up pressure. That's how I cut. Oh, it's working, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got some jokes. You guys are so funny. <laughs> and then when I'm making turns, like what's making the turn is the tail. So uh -huh. that's how I make my turns. I'm just looking where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Can the blade ever cut through? How, how thick it is can. The, how thick is it? 10 mil. Okay. So, so it's, it's pretty thick, but it is, um, it's a PVC, so it's, it's softer. That helps it. get around the corners and stuff, so. Nice. Okay, I like this. Yeah, I can't wait to try this on Clearplex. And then here, and then any time I change angles, I cut the blade off. Yeah. Yep, I get about halfway through. You can usually get through like all of it um, off of one or like halfway. Nice. Um, this is cool being the camera guy. This is cool hearing all the little the jokes. Yeah, it makes the whole thing way more fun. Oh, there we go. Can we change it to a Tom Cruise voice, though? <laughs> no, funny. this is the best that the voice has gotten. I've, I've had worse. Cool. Did it. Nice. Nice. Your sword, sir. <laughs> All right. So then we'll peel this off. And then do you heat shrink it every single time? I typically do, just because whenever... Um, Even though it's like, hot? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's mostly flat, um, and it's probably going to lay down fine. It's more of, it's always an extra precaution. So if there's any little fingers or something, something that yeah. might potentially pop up on the bottom, right. that's really what I'm concerned about. So I always take a heat gun. I just touch up the ends really quick just to double check it. But that's been, uh, that's been a, uh, a trend like ever since I've been tinning. So I, I, would, I would have some fingers pop up after I cut out my film and install it. So, so you, just, you do a double shrink? Yes. Got it. Cool. All right, so I'll go ahead and I'll cut out this windshield. I'll do the other side. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh Just things God. that you wouldn't even necessarily you guys are think so of. so funny. God, you guys are funny. You chat got jokes. <laughs> yeah, and they, they have no filter, so. That's good. But they're all good people, so. I'm not a good person. <laughs> it's oh my silky, God. his hands in the game. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Oh my God, these guys are funny. They're going to change your name from the tent trainer to Mr. Silky Hands. That's funny. Someone <laughs> make that meme, please. <laughs> 
what, that's what they'll ask next time. They won't ask, where's the film trainer? They'll ask, where's Mr. Silky Hands? <laughs> Get a mirror. We got to take off this too. A little little screw there. Do you ever watch the Linus Tech Tips channel? The what's that? The Linus Tech Tips channel. Uh uh No. What's uh -uh. that? Oh, it's a it's a tech channel, like computer channel. Uh -uh. On YouTube, I bought their screwdriver. This is the nicest ratcheting oh, screwdriver that you're ever gonna see in your life. Not that it matters that much for what we do, but this is nice. This might be the small one. I'm what is like double ratcheting? Like every time you turn it? Yeah, it's a little really high quality ratcheting screwdriver. Okay. Hell yeah. You sell this? No. Not yet. They sell it. <laughs> no, but this is like another one of those. Uh, so they're a really popular YouTube channel and um, they've done shirts and stuff for a long time. Um, but he always has a ratcheting screwdriver that he's used for years, and then eventually they develop their own ratcheting screwdriver, and it's, like, genuinely amazing. So it's, like, an $80 screwdriver, and I bought two of them, one for each side. How much is it? It's an $80 screwdriver. Wow. So, oh, is this one too big? Is that what I'm, I'm on the big one. Yeah, it should be. I need to get the torch set. I've been using the other one. Um, oh, I guess it's on the other one. This one's the big one. Can you grab me the other yeah. one? Yeah. I bought it because I, I don't really remove door panels either, so um, it should be fine with this one. Oh, then. T20? Okay. Yeah, I just bought the wrong bit set. I just bought it for this right here. Mm, it's nice. That's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, but okay. So I mean, it just depends. I like them both. I'm more comfortable with the torch. I can see that. <laughs> What's safety torques? Are those like the ones that are riveted in? Is that what he's talking about? Is that the like with the indent? Because that's definitely what. That one had. I think they're called tamper proof. Uh, okay. So, let's see what you're talking about. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh no, I definitely paid for it. Can I try that card on? Oh, yeah. Let me try this. And it's got a little more wear on it. Oh. I think they get better the more you use them. Yeah, what glove were you using? It's um, the Heat Glove by Wrap Glove. Mm. Oof. It took me a while. I mean, I started with the torch. Um, I don't recommend that. Did I definitely burn? burned a lot of film. <laughs> For sure I burned film. I burned one panel, too, on a Porsche. Oh. Back in 2004. Oh, that was a while ago. <sighs> but Last time I burned sticks something. sticks with you. <laughs> definitely. How much, uh, how much was that one? I think it was like 800 bucks. Oh. So not as bad as what it could have been, but Back definitely... then was a lot of money. Yeah. For sure. Oh. Oh no, bad. no. It's so it's just a mechanical ratcheting screwdriver. I've been watching the Linus Tech Tips channel for years and years. What is it called? The what? Linus Tech Tips. So they do a lot of like tech hardware stuff. So it used to be like PC builds, um, tech reviews. You know, it's a a tech review type of channel. But then they kind of I don't know. You'd have to see. Right. They've only got like 15 million subs, so. I'm trying to find them. 
Not everybody knows LTT, though. See? LTT. Yeah, Linus Tech Tips. Just you search either one. Got it. Yeah, the orange one. So they got a new subscriber. <laughs> they got a nice thumbnail. Nice. You gotta. All right. Uh, no, I was I was heating a quarter glass on the on a Porsche, and I got too close. All right, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this one then. Ready? That's the thing with torches, like there's no forgiveness. Once you burn something, it's it's gone. Yeah, yeah. With a heat gun, you've got a little bit more leeway. Right. So just look at a torch like going way faster. You got more heat. Shit me melts a lot faster. Now let me go back to my wimpy little. Spray bottle or tank? Um, it just depends if, I mean, you, don't, you can't travel around with tanks. Um, in my situation, I travel a bunch. So I definitely wouldn't travel with a, with a keg, but I use a tent buster when I travel. No. No. I don't, I don't think it's going to be more ideal. No. For a stubborn film. Um, because a heat gun is still, like, you're talking about, like, high-quality polyester here. Like, you can burn it with just a wimpy little heat gun. Yep. So a torch just throws more heat so everything goes faster. So, like, I mean, every video that I've done for the past, like, two years have pretty much, like, at least, easily two years, have all been with this guy right here. This is just a, a cheap heat gun, but it puts out a lot of heat. You just got to put it a little bit closer to the glass. So it doesn't take all that much to shrink film. Film is it's plastic, it's thin. What's the question? My polo? What does he mean? My shirt? Which polo brand? Yeah. Don't laugh at me. Oh yeah, brand. It's a Lululemon. Ah. Fancy. Yeah. I like these shirts. Keep you cool. And then you get them embroidered? Yes. Nice. Because I'm assuming they don't sell Matico. No. Matico Lululemon. No, they definitely don't. They, they don't have, man, that would be an interesting collab there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I like these shirts because it looks, the black long sleeve looks good on camera. And it, yeah, it is actually very, very soft. Got to be comfortable, man. And look good. I think so. I like, I always work in jeans. But every once in a while, I wear soft pants. It's just so much nicer in soft pants. I'm sorry, Matt, did you say that you do clean the sides even though you tape it? Um, so I'll tape them, and then all I'll do is, like, there still might be dirt on the glass. All I'll do is, like, sweep them out. Got it. Okay. I have a habit of either razoring or rough scraping all the glass that I tint. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you oh, my go. God. My pants are Lululemon, too, but... I think he'll get some different nicknames from They're that, so funny. Too. These guys are hilarious. Um, you can get tint slip at, is it 313tint.com? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, 313tint.com. Been using Matico film since December. Excellent question. Yep, he recently um, started doing the training programs for them. So right now he grows around and does a lot of clearplex stuff. Show bottom load? No, I'm going to two-stage a window with the seal removed just to trigger people. <laughs> oh, my God. International shipping? Uh, no. <laughs> Is that a question for you or me? Probably for the tint slip. Oh. Not at this time. <laughs> oh my god, I got like a 
all my other side tools. There's my... See? I put these in my belt because I was using them for some quarter windows. I was showing you guys this one, so that's all I'm pulling out of my belt now. There we go. This is two-ply, right? Uh, yes. It's a two-mil yeah. film, too. Yeah, it's good. I like it. It's thick. Um, my favorite squeegee, I'm using a, a prep squeegee, um, the Fusion Pink. And uh -oh. my initial tack squeegee is the same one. And then See my final guy. squeegee, I use the red line. Um, yes, I definitely do torch the inside, but, but that's me. I don't recommend it. Be careful. It was probably, if I had to guess, from leaning back on the film or something. I gotta recut this one. But I'm glad I caught that. Yeah, there was a little zipper on the top of this window. Um, we were shrinking. I think that was me, Chef. Other stuff. That might have been me. I put that zipper in there, I'm sorry. It's very chaotic right now. <laughs> it's like, let's go do this, let's go do that. But nothing's really taking a lot of time. So like everything's moving pretty quickly. It's all good. No plotter. No, ninja blades. We did bottom load, or he bottom loaded on that side. Yeah, he missed it, sorry. I didn't buy a second GoPro setup for this. And now I feel like I should have. Yes, and I'm a very expensive subscription. I'm going to file this window. Okay, let me know when you're going to. Yeah. And I'll swing on over. Yeah, we both have tent busters. Why am I going to bottom load it? Yes, we both have tint busters. Mine has the extension cord on it, so just keep it on the seat. So the other thing about a file that I'm wondering is if you didn't pull the bottom seal, could you still two-stage file it? Yes. Yeah, just overlap the, the top just a little bit. Are you gonna install the full thing first? Or are you able to like somehow roll it up just most of the way? So what I'll do, it? I'll squeegee the top section, completely dry the top, and mm -hmm. then I'll file. Because the crucial part to filing is that the top edge has to be completely, completely dried. Okay, not... so you'll still tint the rest of it? Yep. Okay. So you, not... do you just leave a little, you said you leave a little gap at the, um, or. So you, when you're doing like the bottom half of a two-stage, do you, when you roll the window up, do you leave a little bit like it down from the very top or are you able to roll the window up all the way? Oh no, not before I file it, no. So before I roll it all the way up, I'll completely dry the top edge and then file. Does it get difficult on like a hot day? On a what day? On a hot day. Nah, it'll dry quicker. All right, so I'm gonna just uh, speed dry this. I always felt like some air pockets would get stuck, like if you don't move quick enough, but I guess you just gotta sweep out the right sections to make that work. You just kinda squeegee up the top, dry it, and then file it. Makes sense. See, this is why it's nice talking to other people and just seeing how other people tint. <laughs> 
That's how like I develop my whole process. Is they just like safen things off of other people. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Just a smidge. Just a smidge off this one. Again, the filing is for installers. It's not, I mean, customers are not going to be like, hey, I want my top edge filed. See, if you want to do a podcast, this is how you do a podcast. What, this? Yeah, you just have a few people in a car. Heck yeah. I think you would do good on a podcast, man. Only if people come out here and then I'll send a car with them. For sure. See, this would be a lot more, this, this to me is a lot more fun because it's, there's like so many other things that like, that happen. Right. Yeah, I, I appreciate I appreciate filing or shaving the top edge of the window. But he's still over there heating that up. Like that takes time. Also, uh, with filing, you got to get your soap mix down, like perfect, so it doesn't like once you squeegee, it doesn't move around. So yeah, that, that takes in a factor as well. Okay, let me get my yeah, because that's gonna like. It's just to take the time to dry it out and everything, it's just going to add time. Yep. I have a decision to make. I'm going to bottom load this for Let's see. Drive people nuts. Maybe. Maybe I'll actually do it. the whole liner and then you want to feed the front end in so if you've ever installed the auto glass it's kind of how you do that very similar thing you're gonna drop like the front edge of the window on makes the install process much easier and then see how that back is like hanging away from the door and you start doing that side you just want to keep everything from touching the sides Slide that over, put that in place, and once we touch it up, we're good. So to do that, you always got to make sure the seals are out of the way. That's the only, that's the only trick there. Edge as stupid close as we can get it. It's so if you do a two stage right, two stage will be just as clean. It's just learning the different methods, and I can see how much more difficult it is to two stage something. But it just depends on your conditions. You know, if you are not as camera facing, because um, like, yeah, there are cars that are very easy to remove the panels on. And then there's certain cars that are not gonna be that simple. You might break a clip, you might snap something, you might scratch something. And like, it, look, that's just a cost of doing business. You just made the install process easier. So, trade-offs. So neither one is more right than the other. Um, but here on the channel, this is like I, 
learn two staging. So bottom loading is just like a different way of doing it. So on a car like this, it's easy for me to leave the seal in and just tuck it in. These are the files. So it's okay. ultra, ultra fine. Oh yeah, that is. And it's also... It's lighter too. Yeah. And it's a little wider too. That's cool. Well, like, so it's not like the big wide files, like just like a yeah. cheesy file that you find at Lowe's or something. Yeah. Mm. 12 bucks, snap on. Cool. Yes, 10 bucks for a pack of clips. Just make sure that you have um, the right clips on hand for the different situations, that's all. Yeah, so there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with uh, replacing clips or any of that. Yeah, trim this one a little bit. We'll show you. We're gonna learn here in just a minute. Clean. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. If anything can be taken out of context, they will take it out of context. Why do you go up in the corners? Mm, just because all the bubbles can exit that way. When I teach, I teach the same thing. You go out? I go uh, up the in the top? corners because you want to force, you don't want to force more film down. You want to That's make a it good go reason to, yeah. Because you don't want to make more fingers. But, yep. Nice. Cool. All righty. That's a wrap on this one. Clean. Is it acceptable, Sorry, Mr. Sorry, I'm Trainer? super OCD, bro. I'm just like, <laughs> like, yeah. Ugh. Me too. Let's check it out. Looks good. Yeah. I'd say that's pretty decent. All right. So let's see how this file works. File game. Here we go. All right, so this is dried. Yes, I speed dried it with the heat gun because there was too much soap. It was sliding around. So we have... It's overlapping right here. A little bit sure. of film overlapping. So what I will do, I will... Oh, so you got a couple different options, too. I got this baby one just to get inside here. And okay. what I'm doing with my thumb, I'm opening it up. And you want to be cognizant of your perimeter. So, like... If there's a bunch of chrome trim pieces right here, mm -hmm. you got to keep in mind that you're using a file. Right. You don't want to scratch anything. So if you need to, roll the window down. So, yes, the bottom half's not done. Yeah. Still, well, I mean, look at all these bubbles. Yeah. So um, this is essentially if you leave the seal in and you're just filing the top. Wow. He uses the whole file. Yeah, that would, that's a lot of work to me. But, hey, that's how you do it. If it works for you. So here, with my thumb, um, you might want to get it on this side, Matt. Okay. Um, so with my thumb, I'm pressing, and then my thumb and index is keeping, sorry, my thumb and middle finger is keeping it stable on the sides, and I'm putting pressure on my index, and I'm just going to find that edge. Don't be scared to push hard. Notice the angle of my the file. It's just want to keep it closer to the glass because if you keep it like this, you might chip the glass. And you don't want to do that. I don't, I'll keep it going to right, right about there. And then I'll switch to the larger one. Um, let's see, which one am I going to use? I think they're both the same. This one's just worn out. Same one. And then. Same concept. Notice I'm not going from here, because look, I got all this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to scratch, so choke up. Just find that edge. And 
roll this down because I need to get more of an angle there. Um, good question. Matico sells them for sure. If you want to message me, I could put in a link. Okay, so notice I rolled it up because I, I don't want to scratch any of this. Mm -hmm. So now if you were two staging, that would still like, that um, makes it real tough. That might hinder it, yes. Okay. And then, so ideally, to do this, it's just easier. <laughs> <laughs> Smells as good as he oh looks. Oh my god. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. So funny. And then I'll just go over it a little bit more. This one is kind of chewed up. There's a lot of debris in here, so I need to clean that out with the wire brush. This okay. One, this one looks newer. Sure, I'll this one a, give this one a whirl. You guys are so funny. There we go. And then here, I'll roll it up a little bit. So you do the little hobby file and the tighter hobby edges. Hobby file, tighter, yep. And then you got some more surface area Thumb, to work middle with finger, stabilization, index finger here. So real low angle. Yes, I'm going up and to the right. And there's barely any foam hanging over. I'm pushing. I'm pushing hard. Putting bar soap on the file doesn't let it clog. Huh. Interesting. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No. There. It's just this little bit coming off of the very edge. There you go. Boom. That's filing. Just that little bit right there. And then I would just go over the edges with um, the Tint Whiz card, try edge, and then just push really, really hard just in case there's any. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so funny. You did say you were, uh, what, like a regional manager at, at Verizon? Yeah, yep, yep. Verizon, wireless, and then uh, snap on tools. That's it, done. Slide nice. It up. All right, That's let me get edge. in here. I could actually make this a little bit more tighter if you get this file a mm -hmm. lot more parallel to the glass. You just run the risk of nicking it. There you go. Well, that's cool. No, that looks super clean. That's nice. I mean, it, it is an, it's a lot of work, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so you got a very perfect edge right towards the top and everything, it's cool. And I think one of the more impressive things is especially when you have frameless and you get those like rounded right. corners, you get that like perfect round with doing right. the file. Nice, very cool. There you go. Roll it up and finish the other half. So ideally, um, Bottom seal removes when you're doing something like that on a framed window. It'll just make it way easier. Yes. Whoa. Who asked that question? What do you think is the number one problem? Uh, number one um, I problem guess it with brand loyalty You want to answer that in first? Then I can go. <sighs> I don't really. Brand loyalty from the like from the dealer's side. I guess so, yeah. If you want to, whoever asked I that. don't think there needs to be any brand loyalty. Um, I think there's like a company needs to, from like my perspective as a shop, the film needs to work for me and as soon as the film doesn't work for me anymore, um, like yeah, there's like a little leeway there if a company really took care of you. But at the same point, like you need to do what's in your business's best interest because that's exactly what they do too. Yes, I agree. And then I think the tide is changing with manufacturers and suppliers where, let's be honest, like they're completely detached to what we're, we talked about this. They're completely detached to what really happens. Yeah. And they're trying to fit like a square into a circle. And it's just. Right. Yeah. They, they. Um... When companies grow at such a rapid pace, mm -hmm. they lose focus on what really got them to the championship round, you know? Yep. There's all so. these other opportunities that they can take and then it starts, you know, it's no longer in their dealer's best interest, it's in the company's best interest. So 
Yeah. You need to always, as a company, you need to always have those those visions aligned long term, or your yep. dealers are going to get unhappy and then you're going to lose them. So I, I, to me, brand loyalty has always just been as far as, do I like the film? Does it work for me? Um, how is the customer service? And as soon as those start falling off, like why yeah. would I stay with a company when somebody else is going to step up to the plate? Yeah. That's what makes good competition, though. Yeah, competition is good. Competition yeah. is good for everybody. There's a lot of competition out there. Yeah, and we're seeing competition pick up a lot. Right. Um, so, like, it's no coincidence um, that, you know, he's out here with, uh, with Matico Clearplex and is, is, is here with all this. Like, part of it's fun, but the other part is, like, no, it's, it's, it's Matico is actually doing some stuff, too. So Yeah, definitely doing my best with that, Chef. What was the question? But yeah. I mean, a lot of tinners obviously have tried multiple brands, but I feel like there's a lot of shiny objects in this industry. Yeah, I mean, it's true, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with trying a lot of different options and seeing what suits yeah. best for you. Plus, when you, whenever you get used to something, it always seems like the grass is greener on the other side. Um, you know, you look at what's cool and with the way social is, like you only see what companies want to put out. So then exactly, you're, you're seeing every company's best face. And when you're working with a film, you notice its flaws, and then those start to stand out a lot more to you than anything. And we don't know. You know, the other manufacturers or suppliers could be doing other things behind the scenes that nobody talks about. And, you know, yeah, that definitely takes into account. But yeah, like you said, when um, oh, what is he saying? Uh, yes, we'll give out the link to the Hinka. Yes, that's I was gonna on say me. something, but uh, <gasps> oh shit! Um, What's up? I gotta get the <laughs> fuck. I forgot. I gotta get the VIN number off that car. Oh, um, let me you, get it. Can you leave your earpiece in here yeah. so it doesn't disconnect? Just yeah, like for sure. Set it down. Go grab a picture of that yeah, for and sure. shoot it to me, and then I'll shoot it right over we to you. We definitely uh, sold 20 heat guns. <laughs> I'll disconnect this, too, just in case. Well, I'm going to buy two of them. Will 10 to 15,000 be enough to start up? Oh, for sure. So there's a number of ways that you can start up. Um, you can buy half rolls, which is nice. Um, I always suggest, though, starting with some practice film just to, like, play with your own cars and whatnot. Um, you can burn through that money very quickly, but you don't need to. Just depends on um, how much money that you want to put into your business very early on. So a lot of that's going to be in um, inventory costs. Film's probably going to be your biggest expense. Um, so keep your inventory a little lighter, like half rolls are nice, and you can use your most popular shades. You don't have to carry all three from the very beginning, but it is nice. Nice. Okay, I messaged you the, the VIN number. Yeah, I'm two staging a bottom load. <laughs> They're calling you Chanel. I actually do wear. Oh my God, they're gonna <laughs> roast me right now. Hold on. <laughs> Look, I can, uh, I can bottom so load funny. this if I want, or I can two stage this. We're just having some fun today. Yeah, this is Chanel. Look, see. Oh, does he? Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> Who nailed that one? I'm not sure. Let's That's see. hilarious. Jaybird. Somebody's like, boom, got him. Got him. Screenshot it. Should you start selling ceramic or dyed film? Okay, so it's, I think it's 
good if you have the ability to give your customers the option. Um, the average consumer is not going to know much about window film. So just because you have ceramic doesn't mean anybody's interested in, and there's people that are installing ceramic for cheap, and there's people that are installing it for a lot of money, and everywhere in between. That's what makes a market. So what you have to do is demonstrate the value of any one particular product, but the thing is when you give people options, um, you're, you're showing a, an upgrade path. So if I just try and sell somebody a tint job over the phone, um, full car with a windshield and ceramic, that's going to be 700 But if uh, that might be sticker shock for somebody. But if they come in here and I'm showing them some options. No, that's fine. That's right. That's what we do. <laughs> These guys. Funny. So you're at three ounces for a three gallon? Yeah. In your soap, correct? Mm -hmm. And when you squeegee, is it moving? Uh, yeah, this is still moving. Hmm. I think that has a lot to do with this glass too, just because on some newer cars, it works perfectly fine. On some older cars, yes. like I said, that's when it's like you gotta look out for that tackiness. So right. I just didn't want things to be, the Pro Nano's got the most aggress aggressive adhesive out of their entire lineup. And it really does, like, it'll grab. And you'll notice, like, even on some cars, like, every, sometimes every single window is completely different. Like, one will be soapy, one will, you know? Mm-hmm. So. So it's just, it's, it's tough to have that perfect balance along, like, all the window types and all the films. What do you think about the new Which new edge? one? The red long one? Yeah, what do you think about the long one? I haven't, I haven't used them yet. There's not really a good use case right now. but uh, Two-staging for sure I would use them. Yep, that's how I two-stage too. Yep. Just little corners. Yep. Tuck those in first. And then we will... Oh, that's getting away from me. I'm not used to having a towel here. Towel back, huh? Nice. Looks good. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, someone asked what type of uh, tape. It's it's called Seal Guard, right? Yep. Yeah. Seal Guard. 313tint.com. We use Lowe's and a whole bunch of stuff. Just make sure you get a real strong um, they're called like sheathing tapes or house wrap tapes. This is going to be the most economical one now. Stay away Everybody from else raise tuck, prices. Uh, duct, uh, what is it? tuck tape, because that adhesive is really strong. Tuck tape is great, yeah. And um, you don't want to tear it with your teeth. That was the first one that I found. Yeah. Or I, off of somebody's recommendation. I, that's what like turned me on to the whole category, because I, I never taped anything. Yeah. Um, like everybody was using painter's tape, and like painter's tape just drove me nuts. It doesn't yeah, stick very much. Weak. You get it wet, falls off. Um, double speed. tap your ear one more time again. Oh, wait. No, do it again. Okay. I think that should be all right. Notice sometimes it, like, keeps turning on Got noise it. canceling and adjusting. All right. It's really weird to have noise canceling in one ear. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and not in the other. <laughs> So yeah, just two different ways of doing the same. Here, we'll hang these up. Two staging, bottom loading, they're both just two ways of getting the same thing done. Does Marco like clay? I don't know. Is clay a person? No, clay is a clay bar. Oh. 
um, clay barring for cleaning the inside. I for like rear defrosters yeah. mostly is what I, I use, use them for. I use that sometimes, depending on the window. Cool. Doors are all good. I'll let them put them back together. Wait a What a nice job. Did my best for you, chef. Little finger there. Get this guy. I see it right out. there. Yes, he's a new installer. Yes. Yes. I'm he's learning. been a new installer for 19 years. Learning every day. Yeah, I think tuck tape has a little bit more aggressive adhesive. Um, tuck tape is also going to be, um, I think, a little bit thinner, too. The nice thing about seal guard, like, so it's little trade-offs there. Um, there's going to be some materials that you don't want to stick uh, sheathing tape to. Like, if you're sticking it to suede um, and you let oh. that sit, it'll yes. rip a chunk of the suede out. So be careful with that kind of stuff. Um, yes. Steel Guard honestly has a softer adhesive to it, um, so it's going to pull from those surfaces um, easier. But still, use caution with any of that kind of stuff. So, like um, suede or Alcantara, is it is the adhesive soft enough? Yeah, yeah, it's it's soft enough where it's not really going to do anything so to like, it. So, like, I would still like exotics. Would you let me see? I would still use caution because it's e. it's a newer product, no, right? It's, it's, it's not. Yeah. So when you put this on like a door panel, like for example, if we put this on like the door panel soft touch one, it's going to grab there, but right. it's got about like that much grabbing strength to most things. So okay. it'll grip it, but it's not necessarily going to like. Yeah. <laughs> I had someone put a uh, tuck tape on a McLaren interior. Yeah. Like, why would you do that? Ooh. I can see why, but yeah. It was not good. It's... Mm -hmm. yeah. It's one of those things where, like, aggressive. you want to do as much as you can to protect it. So that's right. why, like, you think that you're doing a good thing. But, yeah, on the more, like, because I've, we were, we were experimenting with the tape. And then um, I would hear my comments sometimes, like, oh, hey, I tried this on, like, a, an old King Ranch uh, F-150 with leather interior. Right. And it, like, pulled the leather, like, just the coloring right out yeah. of the leather. And I was like, oh. Yikes. And then you never know with interiors, like if there was like a patch up job done, mm -hmm. you just you can't tell by looking at it. And right. then you put tape on it, just, you could then you ruin it. So ruin everything. With with most panels, like most of what I run into is this. It's soft touch stuff. Um, it's pretty wear and tear friendly for the most part. Um, so you, you can be a lot less careful. But when you get into the exotics, you're getting into like unknown territory with that. Marco is the man, the myth, the legend that introduced me to tuck tape before I started ranting and raving about it. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is All that right. David Weimer? Uh, yeah. David, what is up, man? Yep. He's a good man. I He's called him Super Dave. Super Dave. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and remember that one. He's a good man. He's a really good man. Right. Yeah, he's a he's a nice guy. He's been in here um, stirring up memes for a long time now. All right, I covered that wiring harness. What's that? I covered the wiring harness. Oh, okay, cool. <sighs> so what do you want to do? You do you want me to install this? I'll do the windshield for sure. Back window, I'm. if you want to do another one. Um, yeah, for sure. It's up to you. Have to do a back window when I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Miss you too. Get you, let's see, what time is it? 12.30, oh lordy. And there goes the day, live streaming again. What happened? Oh, it's 12.30. Oh. <laughs> Live Dude. streaming is like going into a portal. We got to get And then launched. time just like, oosh, it's gone. Yeah. 
Okay. Still got like TikTok videos to make. Okay, let me. You can do the windshield while I do this. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You can do the windshield while I do this one. Okay. Cannon. So we can speed stuff up. All right, one sec. I gotta send a thing. There was, <laughs> and I appreciate that a lot. We have a windshield scheduled to be broken. Okay, there's that. And then let me copy the link for you guys too. You almost need a producer for all this too. Oh my God, what? Is he going to Frankenstein? Yes. Maybe. I don't know. Either way. Okay, here's that link to that heat gun, too, by the way. Should be in the chat now. So you guys are interested in that heat gun. This is the link that is courtesy of Marco. Um... All right, I'm going to start doing this windshield, and then we'll catch him when he's doing that uh, back window there. Oh, we can turn this off, too. Daddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What you doing, Frankenstein or reverse roll? I think I will do it for my Uncle Frank, Frankie. <laughs> That's the way I do back windows too. You Frankenstein them as well? I Frankenstein the back window and I always reverse roll the windshield. Got it. Windshields, I started with Frankenstein. They're really wide though. It's a lot to juggle. Yeah. When I do windshields, I Frankenstein them from the passenger side. So I don't fight that steering wheel. Still though, just handling that much film. I know, it is. That's what the it tough is part risky. is. So I still do it all the all the time on back windows. They're just a little shorter though. All right, so let's tuck this in there. <laughs> okay, I can do the fold method if you want. <laughs> do something completely different. Okay, I'll do it. Oh my God, you guys. I'll do the uh, the fold method. Here, why don't you why don't you just fold it up like an airplane, and then just throw it in. <laughs> oh my god! Can't, can't you just do something like that? All right, here comes the fold. So funny. Okay, wetting my fingertips. Like this. Yes, taco phone. Airplane departure. That's funny. <laughs> How about like a true magician where you just probably like smack it on the outside and then it, it just like appears on the so inside? So funny. Okay, so I'm gonna take the no, because you don't have anything. The dash is not big enough to rest upon. But yeah, that's what I do. No dry spots. You want this completely wet. Rinse my fingertips because well, I'm going to touch taco it. Well, it is Taco Wednesday, so. And then I'm going to touch it in an inconspicuous spot right here. 
Or is it Taco Thursday? What's today? Ooh, sticky. <laughs> and then lift up to a little fold in the middle. Yeah. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. They've seen this. Come on. I think they're messing with me. Right. Come underneath. I'm touching the non-adhesive side, so I got full control over it. And slide it back here. And then this side's on the top, so I'm going to just pull from this side first. Light tension with my other hand. And then just let it open it up like that. Let it lay flat. And then Superman. And Superman it up. I'm using tin slip. Yeah, so we'll see how this slides down here. I was interested to see how you did that with the, uh, the brake light there. That was cool. It's thick. It is. <laughs> it's getting there. This right here. It was just catching probably on the... Yeah, it has that little seal. Cool. There is only two ways. No, I'm kidding. It's all good. <laughs> Packing up. All right. Hmm? Looks covered. Uh, a little bit more right here. Down? Yeah, just down a little bit more. You're like right on the dots. Right there? Did it move? Yeah. No, you got a little edge. There you go. All right, you're good now. Cool. Perfect. Thank you. So Frankenstein and reverse roll are the most popular because a taco like that is kind of in, I think it's in this in-between area. When right. you get more comfortable handling film, reverse or Frankenstein is way easier. It also depends on the person's body type. Like if they have short arms, yeah. you probably shouldn't be doing Frankenstein. That's a fair point. All right. All right. Let's get this all prepped and we'll reverse roll this one. <laughs> 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 Yes, I did say that. That's funny. There needs to be a certain amount of confidence um, when you're installing. Because if you are too gentle and you baby it too much, you'll cause other problems. So sometimes like when you get angry, you kind of break through some personal barriers there with the film. Yep, I like to say, you tell the tent what to do, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Gotta just be a bison sometimes. But I that gets that gets in difficult when you spend quite a bit of money on film and you're new to it and everything's like, well, I don't want to hurt right. it. Um, but with most things, you can take your time. With window tint, you can only take so much time. Like you can take a lot of time for prep and, and everything, but the install, it's, it's very limited till everything starts like packing up and drying out. You kind of just have to keep moving. You 
just have to go for it. 1996 Honda Accord. Wow. I learned how to tin on that car in 2004. Oh, yeah? Honda Accord, yep. You guys are probably hearing too him do the back window at the same time I'm cleaning the windshield. I bet that is confusing. <laughs> what happened to my Shuiji? Which one? This? Um, no, my uh, hybrid. I probably dropped it somewhere. Oh, I know where it is. Is probably where I was left using it. The... No, see, I'm a magician. There we go. New one. Nice, man. If it works for you, use it. Keep using it. Just started window tent. Been using SunTech Nano Ceramic, and I want to you know your thoughts on it. <laughs> Where's my squeegee? I bought it because it's yeah, fairly exactly. cheap and seemed like a good quality. Um, I haven't used their ceramic, but SunTech Ceramic is not going to be the cheapest thing, for sure. But it should be pretty damn good to work with. Hey guys, look, where's my squeegee? There it is. Oh, <laughs> it's hidden behind, I can't find it. It's hiding. It. It's got the same sun distributing colors too. <sighs> Dear Lord, that happens way too often. SunTech didn't get back to me when I asked them about using their phone. All right, back when they done, Chef. Happens, huh? I don't get how that's so common. Like, it's not like you can just go to SunTech and buy their film. You have to contact people. So you'd think that whenever they have inquiries about that, they'd be like, oh yeah, absolutely. SunTech, you got a customer waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people in my group that were asking about Core, and then it was just like post after post every day. About like, what? hey, they were um, wanting to sign up for Core, Oh, yeah. And nobody was getting back to them about software. How recent was this? This was like a month ago. <laughs> oh. Um, they're pretty quick about getting back to you. I don't think, I think somebody was dropping the ball pretty hard for a little bit. What are the door covers? Oh, the Matico ones? Those are um, uh, clearplex, um, clearplex towels. towels. Same thing, man. Okay. So we pulled the seals on it, so then we could drape the towel over the door. Expensive sounding like a show. Nice. Geo's been good with our company. That's good to hear. No, and honestly, I see that a lot now in the group. Like, there's there's so many posts about Geo that it's like, okay, how much are they paying people for all of this right now? And they're probably not. They're not paying them. They're not. Them. It's all community talk. They're doing a good job. Yeah. It's literally... There weren't a lot of good options. 
and a spotlight got shown on that company and they have been very good at stepping up to the plate and people really appreciate that so people post about it i can't i can't force that interaction and it seems like they're engaged in the community you know yeah the triangle method. Oh, that's interesting. And then I wet, and then I lift up. Here. Uh-huh. And then I just reverse everything I just did. Okay. I gotta figure out how to do more folds next time. So I just did two, you did three. And I have to like one up you with like six. Somebody in the Facebook group is going to be like, I do the hexagon fold. <laughs> Where else? Oh. All right. So I'm going to hop in on the passenger yep. side and just reach over. <laughs> is that David? That David has been here before? Oh yeah. Oh nice. Yeah, he's a he's a mod in the Facebook group too. Yeah. What's up, Super Dave? You are the man. Oh yeah, we gotta do those too, huh? What do you want for lunch, same thing? I am not even remotely thinking about lunch right now. <laughs> uh, this is the film, right? Uh, yeah, if it says Pro Nano 20 on okay, the inside. Cool. Yeah. All right. I don't know. People are saying tacos a lot too, so. <laughs> tacos sound good. No, this is Pro Nano still on this one. I work through lunch. I, I got tired of going places and a lot of time lunch was a punishment. So if I took a lunch break, that didn't stop appointments. So. I always thought this was like an unhealthy way to do it, and then people started calling it intermittent fasting, which I was like, wait, what? I just don't eat lunch. <laughs> so I generally just, I just when, I, when I get home, that's when I eat. I just power straight through it. There we go. So on like the super busy days, that always got a little difficult, but the other thing is when you slow down and if you have like a pizza or something, then you're like, oh, I'm sleepy now.
Yeah, so it's pineapple fried rice at Thai, uh, Thai Topaz in San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Oh, is that the lunch question from yeah. like two years ago or something? Yep. Oh my god. That's how good it was, man. They keep asking about it. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Anytime I took a lunch break. so funny. I would get back from, from like a half hour lunch break. What's that? I said I'd get back from like a half hour lunch break at like one of the shops that I attended for and then there'd just be more appointments. Yeah. And it's like that half hour just put me behind on my whole day. Yep. Yeah, because after this, we got, still got to do video. Sweet. And I got to cross my fingers real hard, so we got to shoot a BB gun at some glass and see if it breaks. That's going to be fun. I'm hoping, I'm honestly hoping I can shoot at some and it won't break <laughs> from, like, farther away. Yeah, those, uh, those BB guns are strong. Yep. sense like when you're in like work mode anytime you like stop you like lose some momentum and your day stacks up and it's more about like uh getting the things out of the way rather than just like slowing down and taking a break Like in a good beginner film, just get the pure max and up. It's not um, the the problem is the carbon. Carbon isn't shrinking friendly um, when it's cheaper. You can do a cheap dyed film. So like honestly, T View on Amazon perfectly fine practice film, and it's like ninety bucks a roll. You don't have to spend a lot of money to practice. It's not the point. Just find something that is not harder to shrink than anything else out there that's readily available because then you'll just create problems for yourself. Yeah, I've never tried uh, Lexan. Yeah. I like... A lot of people, newer installers lot of people... seem to gravitate for it though. Is it, is it cheap? It's real cheap. Yeah. It's like 120 bucks for like a 36 inch roll. Wow. And when you see that with carbon and a lot of people talking about it, it's a quick film to just pick up. You know, that you don't have to like set up an account. Got it's it. easy to get. Um, so it's easy to do business with them. Yeah, and people don't, people that are starting out when they're, when they're shopping films, they feel like carbon's like, oh, it's it's a better film, so that means that it's easier to work with. That's not the case. 
more expensive films does not mean that they're easier to work with. Um, the companies do put thought into how user-friendly they are, but the thought from a company is always like the end consumer. Like, what are the values that right. the consumer is getting? And then the installer just has to deal with it. Black magic is fine as long as you're getting the non ceramic. Sour gummies, ooh, I like sour. Sour candies are the best. Not like overly sour, but just enough. I can eat too many Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> that is a dumb mirror spot. Prime? I don't know, Prime. You mean Expel? Oh. <laughs> yes, you always need a heat gun. Every film needs to be shot. Um, what's a good film for starting off? Um... Sun Distributing has some good lines that are a little more budget friendly. The Helios line, um, Helios Orbit, that'll save you a little bit of money. Um, Tint Depot's got some good lines of film too that, that'll save you a little bit of money. But I always suggest to shop better films and get half rolls. Get some cheap film to practice and then buy some better film to install in customer's car Install it on your own car, but when you're using half rolls of good film, you're still installing the same product as everybody else. You don't have to cheap out on trying to order more. Because really, the end film cost is not as bad as what you might think just looking from the outside in. So, like, for example, material costs on something like Pro Classic on the sides and the back is gonna be like $30. Doing something half price with like Lexan, material cost is gonna be like $15. So yeah, you're like double the material costs, but really per car, how much really was it? And what did you charge? There's good margins with window tinning. Window tinning, it's all about the skill. So it's always easy to nickel and dime film costs, and I get it, but whoa, don't do that. SunTech CIR 20 does fade, has low angle haze. I have it here in Arizona for three years now, sadly. Damn, that sucks. SunTech nano ceramic, 40 inch by 30 feet, $73. Is that expensive? Um, so. Uh, doesn't sound like it, but also buying 30 foot increments sounds like you're not ordering it direct from SunTech. So, SunTech only sounds, sells film through SunTech, as far as I'm aware. Or do they have distributors? Yeah, I've never heard of mm, I don't think so. No, no, no. So, SunTech and, yeah, I get them confused with SolarGuard a little bit. No, they have, they're just, they're all out of uh, their own distribution center. So like Lumar and SunTech, they're, only, they're no more private distributors for that. So if you're buying it elsewhere, um, somebody could easily say it's SunTech and it not be. So just keep that kind of stuff in mind. Oh yeah, we're on Uber Duber heat gun.
I think I've used SunTech one time, and this was like maybe six years ago, and the scratch coat was pretty bad. Yeah. I like one squeegee, it was scratch, but. Yeah, if there's one thing that I've heard both SunTech and Lumar, it's very uh, easy to scratch scratch coats. Lumar I haven't had issues, just SunTech. I think it was like weird, SIR man. or CIR. Yeah, just a little too touchy. Yeah. That's no good. <laughs> Even if it's his gun. Yeah, I think if you are um, if you are doing cars regularly and you're more than comfortable with just a Wagner, this is a Wagner on steroids. This is just a faster heat gun. I'm going to buy two of them. I'm going to get one to each side. The only thing that's got a little bit of a slower warm-up time yep. But it does, like, I, I'd have to take a thermometer and compare the temperature of a Wagner to the temperature of this, right? Because it's telling me 750, but you just, you can feel, like, what is, I don't even know how hot that gets. It just, on the box, says it can go up to 1,000 or something. Oh, uh, which so, is 1,000? Yeah, so that means internally it's 1,000, but I don't know. But this took, this will tell you the temperature and yeah. when it gets there. Yep. The Wagner, mm -hmm. it's like, it's, it says 1,000 on the box, but, like, how long does it take to get there? What is it very quickly? Like, because they all exactly. start a little cool and take a minute to warm, take, you know, a few seconds to warm up. But Yeah, whenever I get, like, any new heat gun, I'll let it run for, like, two hours. Yeah. Just so that the coils on the inside mm -hmm. will expand and get hot so that it gets hotter quicker. That's still a new heat gun. That's probably, like, a month old. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. What I like about it, too, is that it doesn't go through like a cool down cycle you can just turn it on turn it off yeah um the cool down cycles on some of the heat guns drove me nuts i could understand maybe why they have them but yeah clear place time <laughs> you need heat right there um if they popped up yeah here no it's okay you sure yeah okay Let's uh, wipe this sucker off. Okay, so this dot matrix part, is this gonna dry? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they do them so big. Someone, uh, someone asked that. Yeah, no, it gets, especially it in a car like this, yeah. it gets asked often enough. What we used to do like 2004 and up, mm -hmm. um, when I was sitting at a full time at a shop, we would cut that out and put black vinyl. Oh, okay. And it'll, you know, look black. I've done that with uh, the Dotrix before. Yeah. Not on a windshield, but mostly on back windows. It's still like, yeah. There isn't any super great fix for it. You already clean the outside? Uh, I squeezied it off, but okay. it could be wiped down. Should I get Lex and pretend? I don't, I don't recommend it. How much experience do you have, buddy, whoever asked that question? If you if you do buy the at least the pure max and up, yeah, you want to get something that's reputable and it's gonna last. You don't want to have any boomerang cars because removing glue sucks. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, that'll do her. Cool. <laughs> no lesson. Yeah. So. I understand where people are coming from with like early on budgets and at this point there's quite a few people in the group that can like will heavily endorse it and will say that they've been using it for longer than a couple of years. So I'm not going to just write it off, but the thing you also have to be conscious about is when you really nickel and dime your film, 
that's <laughs> where like you're, you're putting it on a customer's car. You need it to last. You need it to look good. Um, that's your reputation there. So that's why I'm like, at least do the Pure Max and up. There's lots of reasons I like the films that I use, though. So, but do what you got to do. Never lax in enough of us have made a mistake. Yeah, so like, I, I'm, to be honest, I'm always more about the process and getting things installed, and I recommend things that I like and things that I can trust. So at the end of the day, I want everybody to get out there, install, do good jobs, and make money doing it. So I can never guarantee how long any film's gonna last. Yeah, the Pure Max and up. The Pure Max is like, anything lower than that is just hazy in the sun and way more difficult to shrink. Alrighty. So. That'll do it. What is it, like one? <laughs> Is it two? It's not, please tell me it's not two. Okay. It's 111. All righty. That was fun. That was fun. Steaks tonight for sure, bro. Yeah, right? <laughs> GoPro. Oh, wait. Canon. Canon. There we go. Look at that headset. See, it just like gradually falls over as I'm streaming. Ugh. It's tired. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> nice timing. Perfect timing. <laughs> Deep down. Deep down with the five. Yeah, that's why I suggested half rolls. If you want, like you can use half rolls of a good film and then make money doing that and then quickly add up on your inventory and then you're not risking any type of film reputation. Are we gonna see some windshields getting abused today? I actually have to shoot that as a video. So there's no way that we can do a live stream of it at the same time, it's too much. So, we're gonna have to sign off here. Um, we'll try and put, like, we'll see how time works for tomorrow. Um, we'll, is that the real Marco or a paid actor? In the flesh. No, he's paid. That was fun, guys, thanks for having me. All righty, we'll shout out some super chats and then, uh, All right, so a lot of super chats today. Guys, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Um, big shout outs to Swole Gang, Daniel Reyna, Swole Gang, Daniel Reyna, Sun Distributing, DC Customs, Kobe, Tint Wiz, and T-Town. Thank you guys so much. It was a hell of a stream, a lot of fun. Very different from what we usually do, but this was fun, good fun. So we'll try and do something tomorrow. Um, Hopefully with Clearplex then, um, I have a blazer that could st we could still put it on there, play around with it. So just kind of depends on how the schedule goes, but most likely we'll be live again then tomorrow and play around with that stuff. So thank you guys. You have a good one. Bye.